from Councilor Lapierre. We will hear this morning a very exciting announcement, one that brings together all three levels of government, and one that meets the government objectives again at all three levels, and from a community-defined perspective, will move us closer forward on our objectives of population health. It is my pleasure to introduce our members of Parliament, Mark Sede and Paul Lefebvre, representing the Honourable Amarji Sohi, Minister of Infrastructures and Communities, for this morning's announcements. Please come forward. Well, good morning, everyone. Bonjour. Très heureux d'être ici ce matin. Euh, ça fait pas quoi, un an et demi, même pas, Marc, qu'on était ici à faire une annonce également. But a year and a half ago, Mark and I were here to do uh, announcements for the Phase One of Infrastructure Canada funding for transit. And so we're really happy. Très heureux d'être de retour pour la Phase Two. Um, C'est un dur plaisir d'être ici avec Marc et également avec Glenn Thibault qui est avec nous et tous les conseillers municipaux, all the municipal councillors that are here and that are, have joined us today, and Mayor Brian Bigger. I know we have worked uh, and collaborated uh, in the past two and a half years very well, and this announcement today is just proof of that, further proof of this uh, great partnership that we have at all levels of government. When we work together, things happen, and certainly things happen for the city and the region of Sudbury. So earlier this week, Minister Sohi, the Minister of Infrastructure for the Federal Government, as well as Minister Chiarelli, the Minister of Infrastructure for the Province of Ontario, announced that our governments have reached an agreement on Phase 2 of the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Plan. So a little more than two years ago, we committed to work hard to build a stronger middle class and create opportunities for Canadians. The first thing that we did to try to grow the economy and create jobs was to lower middle class, taxes for the middle class Canadians, leaving more money in their pockets to spend in their own communities. We created the Canada Child Benefit that provides support to low income and middle income families lifting thousands of children out of poverty. Our government understands that well-maintained and efficient infrastructure is the foundation of building strong communities. Notre gouvernement comprend très bien que l'infrastructure et les infrastructures viables et efficaces bâtissent des communautés fortes. And that is why we are putting forward an ambitious infrastructure plan. So Investing in Canada is our 12-year infrastructure plan that will make historic investments to grow, to help grow our economy, helping create middle-class jobs, build inclusive, accessible communities where everyone has the opportunity to succeed, and supports low-carbon, green, and sustainable investments. While developing this plan, the Minister of Infrastructure engaged extensively with provincial, municipal, and indigenous partners. Pour développer ce plan d'infrastructure pour le Canada, notre ministre et son équipe ont consulté de long en large au travers du Canada avec les provinces et également les municipalités d'entendre leurs recommandations et de délivrer sur leurs recommandations. They told us that in order to undertake transformational projects, they need long-term, sustainable, and predictable funding. Bon, my friends, mes amis, aujourd'hui, on est ici pour vous parler et vous faire cette annonce que nous, or we are delivering on that challenge that the municipalities and the province gave to us. Under the recently signed agreement, the Government of Canada will provide more than $11.8 billion in federal infrastructure funding to communities across Ontario. This funding will support four priority areas, public transit, green infrastructure, community cultural and recreational infrastructure, and rural and northern communities. Today, Mark, Glenn and I are pleased to announce the fruits of these negotiations. Aujourd'hui, Mark, Glenn and moi-même sont très heureux avec les municipalités de Sudbury de faire cette annonce de, et de vous dévoiler les fruits de ces négociations pour la région ici de Sudbury et pour le nord de l'Ontario. First, I'm extremely proud to announce that our government is investing more than $39 million in the city of Greater Sudbury for public transit and natural transportation. Le montant de 39 millions sera euh, investi sur, tout au long des de dix prochaines années. When coupled with provincial and municipal investments that you will hear about shortly, more than 99 million dollars will be spent on priority projects of the city of Greater Sudbury over the next 10 years. The government of Canada recognizes the communities like Greater Sudbury. <laughs> 99 million. Maybe. It's an historic day. Where our government recognizes that communities like Greater Sudbury need long-term, stable funding to be able to prioritize, manage, and complete infrastructure projects. Today, we are investing in Greater Sudbury and Sudburyans. We are providing the city with the tools it needs to plan and complete transit and transportation infrastructure projects for the next decade. 
My friends, this, this is an historic day for several. Far more than just bricks and mortars, transportation infrastructure is a key driver of any community's economic and social development. Investing in public transit and public infrastructure is about building stronger communities and recognizing the vital role everyone plays in advancing our economic, social, and environmental well-being. More, more than an end to itself, infrastructure is the means by which we build a more prosperous, inclusive, and sustainable country. It's a joy and a pleasure to be here to talk with de, de nos projets avec la municipalité de, de Sudbury et être avec également mon collègue Marc Serré qui travaille très, très fort pour la région de la Côte et le Grand Sudbury. Donc Marc, je te passe la parole, c'est un homme historique. Je joue avec Marc, toujours un plaisir. Merci. Merci Paul. Comme tu as mentionné, as you've mentioned, having the two federal MPs working closely with our hard-working minister, Glenn, working with council, working with the mayor, makes a difference for our community. And this is a good example on how we could work together and deliver for the people of Greater Sudbury and Northern Ontario. So, merci beaucoup, Paul, le travail que tu fais avec moi à Ottawa. C'est une équipe. On a souvent parlé du besoin de représenter la communauté we also really need to continue that partnership that we've developed with city councillors, the mayor, and our local MPP to make a difference. I'd also like to mention, obviously, what Paul has indicated with this historic announcement, but also I want to thank the Sudbury Transit staff for all the work over the years that you've done. I remember for uh, three years, uh, I was a Sudbury Transit uh, driver, and those were the best years. I really learned about human behavior. <laughs> so, so I know how the work that you're doing, so, and the staff that you're doing here. So, so th this announcement today, as quite indicated, when we look at the, the streams, and, and I know when we look at the transit funding that's being announced today, and as it quite indicated, all the others, funding streams that will now be available to municipalities all across Ontario for sustainable funding for the next 10, 12 years. Very important. And also, to be mentioning, and I know council has worked really hard. You know, previous councillors, sometimes councils were criticized for not making decisions. Councils today are criticized for making some decisions, um, but you, you stuck by those decisions, and, and, and I know we're looking forward on the next step when we look at the Community Recreational Fund on how we could build a Greater Sudbury even better now with some of the funds. So those are the ideas. But the only reason that we're standing here too, we got to remember that, is because council and community organizations have put forward projects, have worked hard to make decisions. And if you didn't have those projects, we would not be able to advocate for you in Ottawa and at Queen's Park because you have come forward and made decisions on projects, now we can advocate and try and make those projects a reality with you and working in partnership with you. So today, so today. <laughs> so Paul also mentioned um, the, the announcements uh, for, for Greater Sudbury, but also mentioned some Northern Ontario projects. So I'll just mention a few. Um, also in other communities like Chaplow, $54,000. Cochrane, $107,000. Espinola, just closed by $90,000. The city of Timmins, $15 million. You look at Capus Casing, $281,000. Those are investments in communities in, in, in North Bay. There's been a tremendous amount of investments being made for transit. And when we look at the need for more transit, this will help our seniors, this will help our students to be able to, to get in and around schooling, get in and around the community. And this is important to look at how can we benefit uh, students and seniors in all of our communities. So I just want to thank, thank everyone for being here today. Um, for this uh, announcement as we look at our government moving forward uh, the plan that we set out in 2016 with the first budget 2017 and now this budget there's 600,000 jobs that have been created across Canada and we're looking working hard to ensure that Northern Ontario Greater Sudbury is part of that growth 
and we want to keep our youth here. We want to keep the employment. We're working hard to make that happen. And I'll thank you so much for being here today. Um, and I'll pass the, uh, oh, I was going to say to, to, to my minister, but I'll, I'll let Catherine take. Thank you so much for being here, minister. Uh, thank you, MP Sade and MP Lefebvre. Today's announcement is historic and it is phase two of the Investing in Canada plan. Under the phase one agreement, we can state that through partnership uh, funding, this city has committed to and is making many advances that will deliver better routes, schedules, and services to the citizens and increase the use of transit and active transportation for all. This phase two agreement promises much, much more. I'll now ask the Honorable Glenn Thibault to come forward, please. Thanks, Catherine. Um, everyone knows my stick, so good morning, everyone. Good morning. See? That's fantastic. Um, I know I don't have to repeat a lot of the same things that uh, Paul and Mark have said, but um, uh, it is uh, truly my honor to be able to be here and, and stand and speak uh, to all of you and talk about this uh, historic announcement. But I think it's important before, uh, before I begin that uh, we recognize that we're meeting in the Robinson-Huron Treaty area and I wish to acknowledge the long history of First Nations and Métis in what is now Ontario uh, and show respect to them today. Um, I, yes, I also want to recognize the neighboring communities of the Atikshmishing, Ashnishnabek, and the Wanapate First Nation. Um, we, we are talking about a historic agreement between um, the federal government and all provinces, but specifically with, uh, with uh, Ontario. Um, and we're talking about um, Ontario's portion of being $10 billion to match yeah, our 33% component of the overall infrastructure ask on this. And when we're talking about what this is going to do for Sudbury, our contribution, so the feds are in at $39 million, um, I'm very pleased to announce that the provincial allocation is $32,803,000. That, that is a significant investment um, by both senior levels of government, and I know the municipality is going to speak as well. So we have all three levels of government working together. All three levels of government recognizing that we need these investments. We need these investments in public infrastructure. We need these investments in, in public transportation. And I understand that um, full details of the project criteria have not necessarily been released yet, and Council's got to work on that, but I know Greater Sudbury uh, Transit has some um, projects that they've already outlined that they could use this money with. And some of them are things like right-sizing the transit fleet based on ridership and route design. Um, bus rapid transit design and a study is another option. Um, accelerated bus replacement program that would reduce maintenance on older buses. Um, the one that I like, Minister of Energy, the potential for electric buses and infrastructure. But of course, I think it's important when we look at the front of this bus, you can actually put bikes in there, not motorcycles that I ride, but <laughs> other type of cycles, bicycles, which I'll start riding, I promise. I have one and there's so many trails in our community that I'm, I'm doing that with my kids now. But we're really able to now look at how we can bring together all of these worlds and make sure that when we're talking about things that are important to our generation, which is climate change, for example, it's the biggest fight that we have. Public transportation is the way that we can address this as a community and do our part. And if you think about this, it's almost $100 million. That's almost $10 million a year for the next 10 years investing in public transit in our community. And that really is going to make a huge difference for the lives of our citizens. Yes. So I really can now tell my 14-year-old daughter when she asks for a ride somewhere, it's like, no, jump on the bus, right? Because we actually have a great system here in place and it's only going to get better each and every year for the next 10 years thanks to the collaboration that we have between our federal partner, our provincial government that I'm very proud to be part of, 
and our municipal government and the leadership of the mayor and council. I want to say thank you for that leadership, thank you for the partnership, and I look forward to being back here and in other places around this city as we continue to make infrastructure announcements for the betterment of, betterment of our city and for our citizens. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, MPP people. I'd now like to invite Greater Sudbury Mayor Brian Bigger to speak on behalf of Council and our community. Thank you, Catherine. It's always a challenge uh, following so many great speakers uh, at an event, and, and we're, we're, we're talking about something that is so special, so important to our community. I mean, this is simply one of the greatest days uh, uh, for public transit in our community in all recollection, I think. And, and so I think we need to applaud and, and thank our MPs and our MPs. You'll see the importance of this meeting. Uh, you know, anybody who's, who's here in town on council, uh, any of our executive leadership that's here on town, in town that uh, are here and showing their, their support and their understanding of how important this is to our community and, and to our community's future. So I, I just want to recognize the councillors that are here and, and the staff that are here um, and, and the media for attending because this is very, very important. I'd like to thank uh, MP Lefebvre and MP Sade, uh, uh, our Minister uh, at Thibault, for being uh, strong, strong advocates for our community. And it's, as they've said, it's the partnership between the municipality and the different levels of government that have made this opportunity uh, available for our community. It's, it's, it takes long-term planning, and that's something that uh, we uh, started up uh, just uh, a couple years ago, uh, working on our transit plan. And with long-term plans, identifying projects can move us forward, that opens up the opportunity for us to receive this type of funding. One thing that's very clear as mayor is that um, public transit is an essential service and, and something that affects affordable living for many people in our community. It's something that uh, people use, they use, use it to get to jobs, they use it for education, they use it for health care and improvements to our transit system will help people access all of those services that are provided within our community and, and make our community a better place to live. Um, reliable funding is something that is also so important and as the, the MPs and the MPP um, have, have spoken about, you know, as municipal leaders and councils, we look for reliable uh, funding sources so we can build these plans and have these uh, uh, dreams about improving our systems and you know when you build these plans the funding is such an important element of this and, and so they come hand in hand having the confidence to be able to build the plans knowing that there is support out there for our public transit system and the future development is so encouraging and, and it's something that we've been working on as a council uh, through our entire council term um, Updating our financial uh, plans, updating our asset management plans, updating the transit action plan, and, and really looking to transform our entire community over the future. So today, we have that reliable and dedicated funding agreement between all three levels of government. Uh, you know, $100 million over the next 10 years. It's just, it's unprecedented to, to look forward at this amount of money in enhancing our, our public transit system. So let's let's give another applause for $100 million. I'm sure that many people in Sudbury have already noticed the changes that are happening in transit and, and the changes that are already on their way. You know, we've had a number of public input uh, sessions. Uh, we've listened to the public and we've, and by listening to the public, we've developed further plans. We've gone out to the public with public input sessions, and we're now ready to be able to begin to implement the plan, and we have the funding. That's why I'm so excited. We're poised to continue to really build up our public transportation system here in, in our greater city. Uh, with this reliable funding arrangement, uh, 10 years 
gives us the opportunity to take advantage of all of the technology improvements and changes that are coming our way. It'll go a long way to increasing our rider, ridership in Greater Sudbury, and this can make our transit system a much more attractive choice uh, of uh, transportation by improving that access and reliability for uh, people who will use the system. One of the things that uh, you'll read about is, is that uh, the, a sign of a, of a uh, well-designed and well-operating transit system is where more affluent people are riding the transit system. And you, you see a lot of this happening uh, in, in, in the uh, city of Toronto where, where people are, are reliant on the public transportation system and because it just makes so much sense. And so we've got to get to the point where our transit system is a logical choice for subvariants. So some of the projects that, uh, that uh, our MPP has started talking about um, that we're going to be moving forward with are smart card technology and, and that will allow passengers to pay in a more efficient effective ways. Um, accelerated bus replacement to reduce maintenance costs on older fleet vehicles. The potential for electric buses and infrastructure, which our uh, Minister of Energy uh, really likes. More specialized transit buses to serve persons with disabilities. Additional sidewalk connections to reach transit stops on key routes, like the work we're doing on the Kingsway. Cycling infrastructure to enable cyclists to better connect to the transit stops. Improved bus stops, improved wayfinding, benches, shelters, and so much more. These are the types of things that we can begin to look forward to. So I'm really excited about all of the possibilities ahead of us for our program. And uh, once again, on, I'd just like to wrap up and say on behalf of my colleagues on City Council and the citizens of Greater Sudbury, uh, I want to express my sincere appreciation to um, MP Lefebvre, MP Sarre, and uh, MPP uh, Glenn Thibault uh, for their efforts to preserve and enhance our community's sustainability and public transportation system. Thank you so much. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Okay, so that concludes the formal portion of our announcement. And I would ask our speakers uh, to come forward for a group photo followed by photos with members of council. Um, the thank you again to all of our leaders. This is a very much a historic moment and I can't uh, overestimate the impact this is going to have on the health and well-being of all citizens of Sudbury now and into the future. So thank you very much.